Welcome to my show, The Captain O Show. In this video, I'll be giving you guys a few tips on how to safely operate your aircraft at night. So let's jump into it. Nighttime can be a fantastic time to fly. The air is usually still and the airspace quiet. And most would agree that the sight of the stars against the dark sky is a view not to be missed. But night flying has its challenges, and while there's nothing inherently dangerous about flying at night, a night flight can quickly turn hazardous, so you want to be aware of the many hazards you may encounter. Pre-flight planning is number one, so first thing you want to do is give yourself extra time. During the day, many of us get accustomed to hopping in the airplane after just a check of the windsock and a quick pre-flight, but things can get a bit more challenging at night. You want to listen close because this is important. While doing your night walk around, grab yourself a good flashlight and do a thorough check of the aircraft. Missing something like a clogged pedal tube or a clogged static port, you know, like do on the wings that could ice up during flight, could cause big issues during your flight. So you definitely don't want to just jump in the airplane, especially not at night. Check your fuel, bring extra fuel. Me personally, I always fly with full fuel tanks at night, definitely. Uh, let your eyes adjust, so you don't want to have a bunch of bright lights in your eyes before you go flying. You're also going to use your other senses more acutely, like listening to your engine, feeling how the plane reacts or how fast it's going. You got your gauges, but you want to rely on other things too. Like in this next clip, I'm on final approach in Astoria, runway 26 facing the west at the coast. Approach lights are lit, and here I go. One of the ways you want to fly at night is get your eyes adjusted to the dark. Because your depth perception is not as good as when you're approaching your runway. Try not to fixate directly on the flashing lights or the steady lights. If the airport you operate out of features part-time lighting, know how to operate the lights. Tune in the CTAF frequency. Key that mic seven times for high intensity, five times for medium intensity three times for low intensity. Keep an eye on your ASI. It's very important to be at the correct airspeed for final approach. And also, fly the proper glide slope. Be on the pathway lights and the VASI boxes. Don't let it get red over red. The environment around the airport you fly at may not be very lit, so keep an eye on your glide slope there. Stay on the correct path. Double check your weather. Make sure there's not going to be any ice, rains, clouds, showers, check your MADARs and TAFs, call WX brief. Make sure your aircraft lights work. Definitely want your position and your strobes, taxi and landing lights, especially if you fly into a dark airport like I do at Twin Oaks. You definitely need the lights because only the runway is lit and there's trees and you can't see anything else. So make sure your night current, uh, FAR said you need to have accomplished at least three takeoffs and landings to a full stop at night an hour after sunset to an hour before sunrise in the past 90 days in order to carry passengers. And it's pretty easy to violate that one. Cross-country night flying is one of the best ways to build time. Cross-country night flying allows you to kill two birds with one stone. For your ATP rating without going through a college program, you're going to need 200 cross-country hours and 100 of those at night. So you need 100 total night hours. So you can, for at least the first hundred hours of cross-country flying, you're killing two birds with one stone. You know, it's never too much to have too much nighttime and night flying experience. It definitely helps. And you'll be flying at night a lot with the airlines, whether you like it or not. So I suggest getting out there and becoming current, getting yourself immersed into the night flying environment as soon as possible. And these next few clips here, starting out with downtown Portland, see us flying over the city and then we'll also fly over downtown Seattle which is great Space Needle Ferris wheel ferries on the water fast Bravo airspace fast Delta airspace if you're up for the challenge it's great absolutely beautiful I love flying over the cities at night hadn't done Seattle before I've done Portland quite a few times but I went up with a buddy who knew the area and was able to navigate the airspace a little better than I was Honestly, at first I was kind of uncomfortable because there's kind of a lot going on in the airspace around uh, SeaTac there, but the guy I was flying with, my guy Tim Scott, he knew exactly what he was doing, so it turned out good. Subscribe, hit the bell for notifications whenever I post another video. 
You already know we're going to take you where you want to go here at the Captain O Show where we like to travel to and fro. Let's go.